The next few videos in the series will explore a methodology for determining what is essential teaching for Christians. First, the perspective is Bible-believing Christians. Some Christians only believe part of the Bible. Other Christians believe in church tradition. This is strictly a Bible-based assessment of what is essential to Christianity. The foundational principle of the methodology is quite simply that nothing's essential teaching unless the Bible says it's essential teaching. Now, there's no verse that says this is essential teaching, so don't be hyper-literal about it. What I mean is teaching that is required for eternal life. I'm going to be keeping in mind all the rules, guidelines I proposed in the last video, as well as a couple other points I'm going to make here. We have to keep in mind that the Bible has some textual variants. For example, in John 1.18, some texts, some manuscripts say God, and some manuscripts say Son. I propose that no essential teaching should be based on assuming that it must say God there or it must say Son. Also, there are passages that are generally, either generally thought to be or are strongly suspected to be not really part of the original. For example, the early Part of John 8, the story of the woman caught in adultery, is generally thought not to be originally part of the Gospel of John. So no, nothing should be proposed it's just that, that is based on assuming that that story is actually part of John. Similarly, for the second half of Mark 16, from verse 9 on, it's disputed whether those verses are really part of the Gospel of Mark. So no essential teaching should be based on those verses. There are also many passages where the best translation is disputed. No essential teaching should be based on assuming one major translation is correct and other major translations are not. It's very helpful starting out in such an assessment to First, be clear that certain, certain phrases used in the Bible essentially mean the same thing. Inheriting eternal life, inheriting the kingdom of God, entering the kingdom of God, and being saved, those four things all mean basically the same thing. Anything that's required for one of those is required for all of those. Now, I'm not just assuming that because it makes sense. That can actually be demonstrated with several passages in the New Testament, which I'm going to mention briefly here, but I will put the references in the notes or in the uh, in the description. First, in Mark 10, Jesus is asked, "What must I do to inherit eternal life?" and this is the story of the rich young ruler who goes away sad when he hears what Jesus commands him to do. And Jesus says, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. So the man asked him about inheriting eternal life, and Jesus says, it's hard to enter the kingdom of God. And his apostles ask, who then can be saved? So we have three of those four things right there treated as essentially the same thing. In Matthew 25, there's a parable that talks about two and only two classes of people. Those who take their inheritance, the kingdom, and go to eternal life, and those who depart into the eternal fire and go away to eternal punishment. So we have take their inheritance, the kingdom, and go to eternal life. Those two things are essentially equated, or at least they're exactly the same people. In, in Luke 13, Jesus is asked, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus answers, enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. There will be weeping. 
there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. So the question is about being saved. And in the answer, he talks about inheriting the kingdom of God. I'm not going to go on too long about this because this is this is one of those obvious things that's still provable. And if anyone doubts that these four things mean the same thing, uh, let me know when we'll discuss it. One possible objection to the methodology I've proposed is that I've made the rules so difficult it may be impossible to find anything that's required to be saved. We'll give it a shot and we'll see if that's the case. So I'm going to close this video with some essential teaching of Christianity. In John 17, 1 and 3, I'm only going to read part of it, but look it up for yourself. Jesus says, Father, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So, equated with eternal life, which we know those who have eternal life, those who are being saved, those who go in the kingdom, those who inherit the kingdom, they're all the same people, is bound up in knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ. Now, we may not know exactly what it means to know God and Jesus Christ yet, but we do know essential teaching of Christianity is know God and know Jesus Christ. And we'll go further in the next video.